Yak 52, why do people buy it? Because the flying characteristics are just superb. There's nothing like it in the West that can beat it in terms of performance, uh, bangs per buck, as they say, American term, or value for money, and just sheer fun of flying the aeroplane. It's cheaper to run and operate in a Harvard, but it's got more performance in a Harvard. You put it in a dogfight against a Harvard, you can shoot it down every time, within two minutes. Whether you approach head on, side on, off the top of a loop, or whatever way you want to approach a Harvard, you can get on its tail within two minutes. And the only way the Harvard will get away is if he chickens out, puts his nose down and runs, as so many people had to in the second war. But they just put the nose down on this, the gap will widen up, because the Harvard will accelerate a bit faster, but then the Yak catches up again. I compare it to the Harvard because the Yak-52 is a big, chunky, radial-engined aeroplane, military-built, military-purpose. And the nearest thing in the West to that was the Harvard, Second World War trainer. If you want to look down the scale to another Western aeroplane, you could use the Chipmunk, because it is a trainer, but it's just a complete class difference between the two aeroplanes. The Yak will cost the same as a Chipmunk. The Harvard costs in the region of 80 to 100,000 pounds. We don't just supply the aeroplane and let you get on with it. What we do then, uh, we, provide a, we provide five hours or longer of training included in the purchase price free of charge. We want people to be safe with the aircraft. And for that we're using um, Skytrace over here at uh, Hapney Green. Skytrace Trace use uh, Russian instructors, Genna and uh, Victor, who are extremely good. They're military trained Russian instructors and they fly by numbers, complete precision. And if you don't do it right, you'll be told. And they just drill into you how to fly, get across the safety aspect of flying. The Russian scheme is built around safety. They do a safety program and emergency recovery from unusual attitudes and things like that. Very strong emphasis there. Hello, my name is Viktor Stavinka. I am a pilot instructor of uh, Skytrace Aerobatic School 
uh, what we would like to uh, show you in this video is uh, how much fun aerobatic uh, flying can be for anyone and uh, at the same time uh, how uh, serious should be the attitude of everyone uh, for the flights uh, connected with uh, aerobatics. Our main aim with SkyTrace is a training of uh, pi private pilot with a particular attention being paid towards the safety elements of flight. What did, uh, for this, uh, we use uh, Yak-52 aerobatic trainer, which, as you will see throughout this video, is capable of any unlimited aerobatic maneuvers and uh, is capable of training of safety programs that may be used for any airplane. Yak-52 is a strong and reliable aircraft that was uh, operated in former USSR for uh, 15 years, many yaks are coming into the West now, and also it's a good, well-researched, developed aircraft. Any mistreatment or misusing in handling with uh, it, any negligence uh, during flight with this airplane uh, may cause some problems for pilot and uh, may cause even some incidents. We want so that pilots will fly safely with this airplane, will enjoy themselves with doing nice aerobatic maneuvers. That's why our uh, intention is to hand over our experience in flying with Yak, to help anyone that is considering to fly with Yak as well as any pilot that wants to start in uh, aerobatic flying. Hi, I'm uh, Barry Yeager, I own a Yak-52 and I decided to buy one after flying um, American training planes for several years and I wanted some excitement, to learn to do aerobatics and uh, get something more interesting, um, which it certainly has proved. I wanted to broaden my skills and also I got fed up trawling around the local area. I wanted to uh, increase my pilot skills and um, get some more excitement out of flying and I did a basic course of aerobatics at uh, Sywell, Northampton, very good uh, flying school. Um, and then there's no point in doing these uh, sort of courses without taking it on further with your own plane. And I then had to choose an aerobatics plane and perfect timing, the act became available. It really is exciting to hear a powerful radial engine, so different from uh, rather boring sounds of a Lycoming. Um, it just is marvelous. Plenty of climb performance, um, good uh, cruise, and much more economical than they've been led to believe. Uh, probably 12 or 13 gallons an hour in, in cruise configuration. I've done about 70 hours in it now, and it's been excellent to have these uh, Russians, these ex dosaf instructors, to go through the basic skills of flying a yak safely, 
and to teach you all the nuances after which they've you know learnt over thousands of hours of flying these planes. I thoroughly recommend it to every every yak owner. They should get some uh, a really good knowledgeable training from uh, the two Russians, the two mad Russians. What's your name, please, sir? Uh, Jack Hemmings. Have you flown yaks before? Uh, yes, yes, I've uh, I've flown this one of Arthur's uh, two or three times here, and I've been out to Russia twice on aerobatic courses. Once to the Crimea and the other time at Smolensk, near Moscow. Um, very exhilarating. The, the, the beauty of them is they've got so much power. You know, they're very powerful and they'll do any of the uh, arresty maneuvers. And they're very forgiving if you get it totally wrong. It's sort of, uh, they allow you to sort it out. So they're really a pleasurable aeroplane altogether. And you're here today to do some Yes, well, while um, Gena and Victor are here from Russia, I thought I'd take the opportunity of uh, coming up and having a fly with them, maybe with both of them. I'll be here today and tomorrow, do a few aerobatics. I mean, I, I have an aeroplane, but it's, it's non-aerobatic, you see, so I can't uh, do the amusing things in it. My name's Arthur Tyler. Um, I look after the European end of Skytrace, which is a professional uh, enterprise, Russian enterprise set up by uh, Russian pilots to teach advanced aerobatics to Europeans and to promote a thing called a safety program to European yak pilots. The aircraft's become very popular in Western Europe recently and these are the people that are needed to qualify and uh, teach the different foibles of the machine to Europeans. I started to learn how to fly uh, at the air club, in the air club uh, um, formed by Moscow Aviation Institute. I graduated uh, in 1986 and then uh, I've been flying in the Moscow Air Club, then uh, Central Air Club of the Soviet Union, and uh, I became a, f a member of Central Air Club aerobatic team and participated in uh, Soviet Union national championships for five years. Then I became an, an instructor. Uh, I passed the course as an instructor in the Central Air Club as well. And then we formed uh, our company, Skytrace Flying School, together with uh, Victor, Asta Victor Astapenko and Galina Kocherova. We were flying together in one aerobatic team of uh, the Moscow Air Club, and we all are instructors, and we just like this business. The main idea of our being here is uh, to um, show uh, foreign pilots uh, how it's important to fly properly with uh, Yak-52. Now uh, there are, uh, seems for me, uh, nearly 50 Yak-52s in uh, the UK. This airplane uh, has some peculiarities in comparison with uh, usual foreign airplanes. Uh, that was produced uh, in Cessna, Piper Enterprises. Uh, <coughs> and uh, uh, it's uh, quite important to fly 
with Yak 52 properly, with taking into account the safety limits during flight. Aerobatics is a very interesting, nice field of human activity, and any pilot who would like to carry out aerobatic, he must understand that. This kind of sport can, uh, connect, is connected uh, with uh, additional risk. And uh, pilots uh, should know uh, so-named uh, safety borders during aerobatic flights. And uh, our main idea uh, to start this uh, business uh, was to uh, hand over our, our experience uh, in aerobatics to uh, anybody who would like to carry out aerobatics. Yak-52 was initially designed as a primary military trainer. It's an extremely strong aeroplane and because of its design so that the student can transfer from a uh, radial engine directly onto jets, um, it's got lots of the same features of it as a jet and it's flown particularly particularly in the landing configuration as you'd fly a jet on throttle to adjust speed rather than stick. That's the major um, transition for any student because originally they're taught with their PPLs to increase speed to put the nose down and to decrease speed to lift the nose up whereas with the Yak we can actually accelerate and decelerate down the same line just on throttle. So you, the, the technique is to fix a picture in the windscreen, the correct picture of the runway, the threshold, and to fly on that picture, accelerating and decelerating as required on throttle. Then at the correct time to flare, flare out, make the hold off and then the landing. Whereas with uh, a standard American trainer, um, it's a different technique. Before every flight, pilot must carry out the flight checks of the aircraft. The initial point for checks is the propeller of the aircraft. We must check all cutter pins, safety wires, installation marks on the propeller and surface of course without cracks or any damages. One side and other side as well. Also engine cowl flaps must have free movement and also without any cracks or deformations. Next we have to check the locks of engine valves. All locks are locked reliably, this panel closed. Then we have to check oil cooler which must not have any oil leaks. This panel must be closed no fuel leaks and the main gear wheel and shock observer proper distance is 20 centimeters all cutter pins and safety wires good we're checking wind surface all damages are cracks and aileron deflection and connection with cutter pins in places here as well everything good and after check of wind surface and flaps this indicator of undercarriage position for extended is normal, is the surface and skin and we use those to check loose article inside the fuselage.
Pretty simple, still the visor. The collection of elevator. Elevator surface. Connection. Caterpins everywhere. Left part of the elevator. Trim it up. The wire. Fixed reliably. Surface aerial. Same procedure for the right side. Close. Close. surface and indicator for left here. Peter tube without cover. I checked stall warner which used to warn pilot about low speed and development of stall and it must have free movement. Wing surface. Here's a dash and locks or cows. Then we check nose wheel. Pressure and distance clean, no leaks of special hydraulic liquid. Safety wires, other pins. Intake, no articles in it. After we complete external checks, we must check the fuel and oil before flight. Okay, we must check level of fuel in both tanks and it must be about 2-3 cm from the top. Each tank has a volume of uh, 60 liters, so 60 liters of fuel in each tank. Then we must close it reliably. We are checking oil now. Minimum quantity is 8 liters. For robotics, the best is to have about 9, and for cross country, up to 16. 9 and a half. And the ruler must be closed reliably, otherwise, it's possible to get oil during flight on the cockpit. We are starting pre-flight check of the front cockpit. Very important is to open this valve for the main air. It must be on, otherwise it will be impossible to extend undercarriage and flaps before the landing. All switches on the left panel must be off. Flaps are in upper position. Trimmer set neutral for dual flight. Friction lever loose, pitch fully forward, throttle fully back, fuel cut off fully forward, magnet is zero, and the carriage control down and locked, starter covered, pressure is sufficient in the main and emergency system, all glasses on instrumental panel are in place, G meter set zero, altimeter zero. The escape parachute is connected with the seat by static line, which means that when pilot leaves the cockpit in emergency situation, the canopy of the parachute will be open automatically after two seconds. The primer must be locked exactly in vertical position, all volumes on maximum, 
frequency set for their field frequency. All switches on the right wall off. Engine cowl flaps closed. Oil cooler door closed. Mixture heater fully forward. Safety wire on emergency air system valve. NDB channel set for the airfield and latitude set for the airfield as well. Before engine starting brakes must be on and locked. The flaps are neutral, the throttle is closed, friction is loose, properly forward, fuel cut off forward, mags zero. One plus two. Three. Mags one plus two. Undercarriage is down and locked. In the front, down and locked and forward the Undercarriage to neutral and locked. Ignition cabin one. I've got uh, 50 and 50 main and reserve air. Glass is intact, beam to zero, balcony to zero. Glass is intact. All the readings look sensible. I've got 65 degrees uh, of cylinder head. All the right hand switches are down, brakes are off, and the brake override is off. That is to the rear position.
as we are flying for a long time already, of course we've got uh, some kind of tolerance for aerobatics and we feel very well and uh, we enjoy it, we enjoy it a lot. Um, but it's, it's a, some kind of difference between just flying for fun and hard training before competitions, let's say. Because it's uh, hard work, really hard work when you have to make figure really nice and you make it in a sequence, one figure after another. But it's uh, so exciting, I can't describe it. That's why I like to take uh, people who never saw it before and just to show them very gently how nice it is. I've flown uh, yak, mainly yaks, yak 52, yak 55, yak 55M, yak 18T, and Yak-12, which is quite old. Uh, I've got some little experience flying uh, foreign aircrafts like Cessna 152172, Zlin, uh, and Extra 300. So to compare uh, with all of them, Yak-52 is the best trainer, I would say. And it's many, if it is possible to say, many function aircraft. It's possible to do anything with it. Full aerobatics, any maneuvers from RST catalog and cross-country instrument flying and it's very strong. You can do anything you want with this machine. Very reliable. If you operate with it properly, it's a very reliable machine. And I would, I would say it's my favorite. You can see it's two-seater and it's designed for initial training and full aerobatics. It has got a radial engine, 360 horsepowers, and retractable undercarriage, flaps, and uh, equipment allowing to fly instrument flying in the clouds and cross-country. In fact, we delivered <coughs> this aircraft two years ago to the UK from Russia, from Smolensk, without any leader or without any additional equipment like uh, GPS or anything else. Just uh, standard equipment of this aircraft, that's all. Uh, and in Russia, it used as a military trainer. Many students uh, start to fly with Yak-52 and then they go to military college in Russia. And also, it used as an advanced aerobat for competitions. For many years we had uh, Russian, or Soviet Union, sorry, uh, championship, national championship with Yak-52. So it's full aerobatics. Uh, and it's reliable. Reliable. For example, you can make you can make a forced landing on the field, not uh, aerodrome somewhere. And according to manual, you have to do it w with uh, undercarriage up, so no wheels. And uh, we had m several situations when, after such landing, all we needed to do just to change the prop, and nothing else was damaged. And we continued flying after three days after replacement of the prop. First time, my instructor showed me a very exciting maneuver called abracadabra, which is very, very strong rotation. And it was my third flight only with this aircraft. And he never said what he is going to do. He just said, "Well, I'll show you something. Just make sure that uh, canopy is closed reliably." I said, "Okay, just say." No, 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 you'll be all right. And then he made abracadabra, and certainly. My canopy was open <laughs> during this maneuver and uh, imagine minus 4 G forces uh, pulling you out of the cockpit and uh, very very strong yaw, so wind blowing from one side and uh, I was so afraid to leave the cockpit but that was funny. <laughs> well, I will try to describe it. So initially it's a negative Flick rotation. Flick rotation means that the aircraft has 
super critical, so two big attack angles and airflow on the wings uh, becomes detached, broken and one wing loses the lift power, lift force. Therefore, we can get very, very fast rotation using one uh, wing with lift power still on. And it's negative, it means we have negative attack angle in the beginning of this maneuver. So it starts as a very fast negative flick rotation, but then instead of decrease of radius of rotation, we just increase it intentionally and we can get in the same time rotation of the aircraft around three axes in the same time. So it's some kind of just roll around everything. Quite uh, exciting and spectacular maneuver. Uh, hi, my name is Dave Smith. Um, I'm a uh, commercial pilot and uh, I also fly a little uh, uh, an aircraft called a Mall. I've done for about five years and uh, I guess after the Cold War the Yaks started coming into the country. There's about 30 of them now, these Yak 52s and uh, somebody gave me a flight in one uh, oh, about six months ago and I was hooked immediately. These aircraft are quite incredible. They're very agriculturally built I suppose, but very strong, very very capable um, uh, and it's just uh, an aircraft that excites me enormously. I've spent most of my life flying straight and level and teaching students how to uh, how to fly and fly on instruments and this is a this is an, a, an entirely new discipline uh, to fly aerobatics uh, I'm just really beginning now with Skytrace to explore what this uh, aircraft can do and it's very very exciting um, the aircraft itself I don't know if you want any sort of a technical description uh, it's a uh, um, an all-metal design. It's capable of operating in very short, uh, uh, very short grass, rough field runways. Um, it's also capable of cruising fairly sensibly with two people. But uh, any time you get inside it, you just kind of feel like being a hooligan for a little bit because it's that kind of a machine. Um, don't know what else to tell you. This this particular aircraft um, came out of uh, Lithuania, in fact, and was on the one of the Russian, um, rather the equivalent to uh, ATC, I suppose, the junior flying clubs called DOSAF. As such, it had a military history, uh, and the British accept certain ex-military types uh, onto the British register. So this one is, in fact, uh, British registered, and I was fortunate enough to get the registration uh, Gulf Yankee Alpha Kilo India, G-Y-A-K-I. So my call sign, in fact, becomes Yak-1. Yak-52 was designed in Yakovlev Design Bureau. Uh, this airplane, Yak-50, that was uh, produced in uh, 1978. On the basis of this airplane, Yak-52 was produced uh, in 1980. Uh, Yak-52 is a good uh, trainer, uh, very strong airplane, uh, powerful. And uh, it can provide uh, pilots uh, to do any figure from uh, arrested system. And uh, also it can provide uh, pilots uh, to carry out uh, safety pro programs uh, so that pilots will know uh, such figures uh, as a spin, flat spin, inverted uh, spin inverted flat spin etc. M14P engine is installed on Yak-52. Uh, it has uh, 360 horsepower and uh, this engine uh, is very reliable uh, because uh, in my experience I uh, watched several times that pilots uh, operated with angel engine uh, improperly, uh, and uh, in spite of this fact, the uh, engine worked and uh, without any uh, failures, uh, without creating of, uh, some dangerous situation.
I'm looking first of all for oil leaks anywhere because it can be a sign of some some kind of not failure but problems and obviously we are looking for loose connections safety wires cutter pins spark plugs all pipes for oil system and for air system it's very important to keep the engine clean to be able to see first signs of any problems it looks okay also oil underneath on the internal side of cowl engine cowl it is good now and from other side the same we are closing now to close engine cowls you need two people All locks must be closed reliably using screwdriver. Same from other side. Engine check complete.
Yak-52 is a very popular aircraft because uh, it's more like a fighter for a pilot to fly. It's very responsive, very powerful, uh, high performance, and it's actually a cockpit layout which is in the fighter, jet fighter uh, style and design. The main difference between the Yak-52 and, let's say, a standard touring aircraft, of course, is that it's uh, fully aerobatic. <clears throat> it's also uh, got a much better power-to-weight ratio, therefore the performance is better. Uh, it's got inverted systems, so uh, flying upside down, inverted maneuvers are no problem at all. And it can perform every maneuver in the Oresti catalogue, straight through to the Lomchevaks, outside negative G maneuvers, uh, abracadabras, stuff like this. This aircraft in the UK must be treated differently to compare with other types, let's say Cessnas or Pipers, uh, because uh, it's just different and it's maybe more complicated a little bit and what worries us that people are buying yaks here and they think that if they've got PPL, private pilot license and according to your law, according to rules, they can fly any type, single engine, weight less than certain uh, kilos but it's different, just different. Um, and we would like to bring our experience and to train people properly, to show them all possible dangerous situations when they are flying this time. In our opinion, it's wrong practice that uh, many pilots uh, who keep, let's say, PPL, never, never done one spin in their life, which we think is wrong. At the top of a stall turn, we find that that is the best way to enter a flat spin. A flat spin, and if you've got it very quickly, uh, rotates at about 360 degrees per second, and the rate of descent can get up to as much as 70 meters per second, 250 foot per second, which is about the same speed as a skydiver. Now, the correct recovery from a flat spin gives the pilot a window of just over half a second to recover correctly on the vertical line down. If he misses that opportunity and over recovers, the aircraft will flip roll into an inverted flat spin immediately. The combination of high plus G, minus G, and then again plus G if the pilot isn't prepared, can very, very easily lead to a blackout. Every pilot should take a proper conversion course. In our opinion, that conversion course should take at least 10 hours as a, an absolute minimum for a very experienced pilot. For a junior pilot, we'd say more, much more than that, 15 to 20 as a minimum. This is to make the pilot absolutely safe, so he's fully conversant with all the systems of the aircraft, not only in the air, what can happen in the air, but how to operate it on the ground safely. So we operate a fully comprehensive ground school that incorporates everything from aerodynamics, mechanics, uh, the physiological effects on the pilot if he's going into aerobatics, the whole aspect of it. The second type of course is for pure aerobatics and essentially Skytrace will take anyone, no matter how experienced or inexperienced they may be, we can teach them aerobatics from basic to unlimited world class level. And several 
a very senior display and uh, successful competition pilots do train with us. Critique and for uh, advanced and unlimited training. Main idea of uh, our uh, training courses uh, is uh, to show uh, any pilot who would like to uh, carry out aerobatics, uh, these safety borders, to show them several procedures of recovery from uh, unknown situations that can be caused during aerobatics, and uh, uh, to train them uh, how to uh, make proper uh, decision during flight, how to uh, operate uh, Yak-52 properly. We can show any pilot uh, not only how to do aerobatics, but what to do when aerobatics go wrong. Uh, for example, the stall speed of the aircraft is 110 kilometers now with power on and uh, clean configuration. So what we can do is we'll show the pilot how it can fly at 50 or 60 in a parabolic arc, or it can stall in excess of 200, 220 kilometers an hour. Just show how wide the flight envelope is. Um, dynamic stalls at 200, 210, 220 kilometers an hour can be quite vicious. If you've got uh, a bank on to the left, for example, and <coughs> you want to over pull on the stick, you can get, a, if you want, a dynamic stall to the right. So, although we're turning left, very steep turn, the aircraft can flick roll to the right and start a horizontal spin to the right, which is quite a shock for a pilot unless he's been shown what can happen. And of course, the same thing applies to, let's say, anywhere around the loop. The aircraft can stall at any point in the loop, not simply because of low airspeed, but because of high alpha on the wings. And when that happens, call it the accelerated stall or dynamic stall, uh, the aircraft can flick roll into different directions. So <clears throat> to train these and to be taught how to recover from these is very important if a pilot wants to learn aerobatics and be safe. Not just the aerobatic maneuver that needs to be learned, what happens when that aerobatic maneuver goes wrong that he must know about. And that's all incorporated within the safety course. In the UK, we train uh, primarily at Hapney Green, which is about 15 miles west of Birmingham, central England. Uh, it's got unrestricted airspace, um, and it's an unpopulated area, believe it or not. Um, particularly out to the west, the Seven Valley and the border counties. In Russia, we train in Smolensk. We have uh, private uh, grass airfield, grass strip, very nice to fly off. Uh, we've got our own airspace. We've got three aerobatic zones, one overhead field and two on the, in the surrounding area. Our own air traffic control and facilities on the ground ambulances, fire crew, uh, canteen, accommodation, mechanics, everything.